Shalom. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Here I am again. I had to take my grandson, uh, his mother down to the school, so. My handicap placard. My knee is blown out, I'm missing cartilage in it, so. I have a handicap placard. But anyway, um, what I want to talk to you guys about is, uh, you know, I, I was... I made the video about Rosh Hashanah not being on, I mean, not being the day because of the Jewish law. And there's there have been several people, mostly Messianic Jew type people that didn't agree with that. But the first thing that we have to understand, and, and here's the thing, you know, that I don't get, I don't get this part, like uh, people go on to other people's channels and then they start accusing you of being a, either a false prophet or a false teacher. Now, a false prophet is somebody that says something that's going to happen and then it doesn't happen. Now, we don't know exactly unless God reveals something. Like, for instance, you know, with Eph Ephraim Rodriguez, he said that this asteroid, this massive asteroid, five miles in diameter, would strike the earth near the island of Manoa, which is right off of, of Puerto Rico. And it would cause this thousand foot tall tsunami to come. And then it, he said that several million people would be killed in Puerto Rico and they would bury them in body bags. Now this is only 10 miles away from Puerto Rico, Manoa, where this is gonna hit. Now, if there was a thousand foot wave, when that hits, like go out to a body of water and throw a rock in it. And you'll see the wave is equal in height all the way around. It forms a ring and proceeds outward from where the rock hits. So if this asteroid struck the earth in the ocean, it would create a thousand foot wall that would come both ways. And they know that when the asteroid, when uh, dinosaurs died, the asteroid that struck and killed the dinosaurs was about six miles in diameter. And it caused a worldwide ash cloud to go around the entire earth and cool the earth. And then it caused a... Uh, a huge tidal wave and it caused um, fires over most of the world. There's ash layers everywhere, even where I live, way up here in California, in these mountains. There's ash layers from that explosion. And so, you know, he says that this will happen and it'll cause the earth to stop rotation, which all these things are nonsense. They cannot happen. So you can say, this guy's a false prophet. Number one, because he's telling you something that's the, the impossible. Because there would be nobody left on the island of, of Puerto Rico because that thousand foot wall of water moving at six, seven hundred miles an hour would hit that and wash every single structure off, every single person. So there'd be no U.S. soldiers there. There'd be nobody to bury the bodies because the bur bodies would all be at sea. And he said they had all these body bags there, two million, three hundred thousand body bags ready to bury the people that were going to get. And you got to go into this place and it's not going to be safe except you go to these places. And then he also said at one point that the feet of Christ would touch the Mount of Olives in like, I think it was 2014 or 2015, and that never happened either. So we can say, well, this man's a false prophet. Now, God has shown me things, and I've told you about them, and then many of you know they've come to pass, like the Saeed thing, the rockets, the thing with the five terrorists in London attacking the bridge, many, many things that God has shown me, and I've made videos about them, and then they happened, you know, and there's a few things God told me that have not happened yet, okay, Jeremiah the prophet talked about Christ coming, and for hundreds of years, he didn't, but he wasn't a false prophet, because Christ did come, and it was also told about King Cyrus would be born, and that he would rebuild everything and let the Jews go back and then that happened so there's many many things in the Bible God predicted would happen before they happened then they did I don't know why God has told me these things you know um, <laughs> I'm trying to help people you see I, I don't I'm not 
making any kind of money off of this. The money I get, I give away. Most of it I've given away to other people. And so I'm trying to help and I spend all my time doing this. And yet I'm still being, you know, people call me names and false prophet. And, but I haven't prophesied anything that, you know, that we can say, oh, that hasn't happened yet. The Lord showed me the Muscov, which is the Russian ship. He told me about uh, why he, the Russians will attack America. That hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. You know, many things. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, this thing with Rosh Hashanah, uh, Feast of Trumpets, the Jews have changed it to the head of the year. The actual beginning of the year, God told Moses was was at that you know the uh barley when the barley become ripe this is the first of the year this shall be your first month and it was changed to that but yet jews don't believe that uh, no it's this other thing that makes it the head of the year the first of the year rosh hashanah <sighs> and anyway paul was the one that talked about the the trumpets being blown he's the only one he said, and then in the uh, book of Revelation, it talks about it by John, where it talks about the angels. That seventh angel blows that trumpet, and then people are angry, and that's the last trump that blows, and those people are angry. The world's angry because the wrath of God is hitting on them, right? And it's got all this bad stuff that happens. God talked to, you know, to Moses, and he told him, that he was going to meet with him and there was trumpets that blow then it said a voice of a trumpet was blowing long and loud right and then god came down and moses went up to meet him oh sounds like the rapture thing it was in leviticus 23 he tells about all this and he tells about to make the trumpets and all this stuff and what to do and then paul talks about it in first thessalonians 4 chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 and he says in there for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ will rise first now he was writing that to thessalonians because they were worried see about their loved ones they were all crying because people were being martyred killed people had died all this stuff the lord hadn't returned people were wondering what's going on paul was writing them a letter to try to cheer them up and to tell them about what the truth was and how they had hope. He said, hey, it's not like you don't have any hope. You have this great hope that they're going to rise first and they'll, they'll go. And then again, Paul wrote about it in, in Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. And part of that says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we're going to be changed and the, the, the dead in Christ will rise. OK, and so the controversy is, is that, you know, these these feasts, these feast days are here and we know that Christ fulfilled the first feast and you wonder, you see, and then if you wonder and you call it into question, these people's beliefs, because it's just a belief. There's nothing in there that says absolutely. In fact, what it says is that. Christ tells all these things that are going to happen. And then he says, no man knows the day or the hour. About that day, no man knows the day or the hour. That kind of stuff. So now, uh, how can no man know? And then he says, I'm coming as a thief in the night. I am coming. Uh, if you had known that time that I was coming, the strong man would have barred his windows and did all this stuff to prevent the strong guy from breaking in. And, but then you have other Christ, you know, Christians, if you dare to say, hey, it looks more like maybe like Tabernacles or Pentecost. You know, the church was started on Pentecost. Wouldn't it be a great thing for it to go up at Pentecost? Oh, but that's next year, brother. I don't want to wait another year. I don't know when it is. I'm not saying when it is. I don't know. I'm, all I know is what God has told me in the, in the past. You know, and I was thinking he was coming in 2011 and we were already past trumpets feast of trumpets when the lord gave me my first rapture dream the first rapture dream i ever had was in november 5th 2011 and then i had 10 days later i had another one the exact same dream identical except 
the oval opening in the sky that I saw in the first one wasn't there, but the dream was so realistic I actually thought it was happening. I've never had dreams like that where it's in technicolor and it looks real, just like right now when I'm talking to you on this camera. That's how real it looked. And then five days later, I had another rapture dream on a Sunday morning, and I dreamed about the pastor of our church, and he came to, in this dream, I saw him wearing the very clothes that he would wear that morning, and he said the very things to me in the dream that he spoke to the church, That and I have proof that I said that, you know, and these guys say, well, brother, you're not hearing from God, you're hearing from a demon, because, you see, the devil's got to be telling you that, that the uh, Christ won't fulfill Rosh Hashanah or Feast of Trumpets with taking of the bride. And nobody knows, you know, that's the problem. <laughs> nobody knows. We don't know. We don't know. And he even says it in there. He doesn't even know. But he's there, he's giving these clues and he's talking about this and that, but yet he tells you, not even the son knows. Oh, but these people, these self-righteous ones that want to attack their brothers and sisters and hurt people by calling them names and stuff, when they're talking about something that's not even a precept of being of salvation, they're talking about something that's a doctrinal thing that they don't know about, but yet they're calling you a false teacher and you're going to be damned and all this stuff. And, oh, it's going to be really bad for you for all the people you deceive. Well, what happens if it's the other way and I haven't deceived anybody? What are you going to say when we when we meet the Lord? Because he says, God Almighty Son said, no man knows the day of the hour. How many people have been predicting he's coming? He's coming on this day. He's coming on this day. How many times has that happened and it not happened? Too many to number. You know, that's what I say. Too many to number. How many people have said that? And it didn't happen. Because he said, no one knows the day or the hour. 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 If we knew, if we know that it's on Rosh Hashanah, that means we know the day, right? Because it's a two-day period. We know it's going to fall in that time. Do you think the devil, God's enemy, would know that, oh, it's on, it's on Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to make my attack. Hey, man, when we, had the, when we had World War II and they stormed the beaches of Normandy, do you know that they'd fake the Germans out by saying they had troops, they went into this area, they sent ships in there, and they were scouting out this place, this port, and they said, the Americans got to come in there because that's the only place they can offload their ships, their tanks, and all their stuff from their ships, right? And then what did we do? We invented this thing called a landing craft. And then we went to Normandy where they had very few, because there they had all these big guns pointing all around there and they had you in a crossfire and they could just hammer you and kill you. Well, where we came, and the only thing that saved the Germans, some, was the fact that Rommel had came out there and saw that there was no men. They were playing baseball and goofing off and uh, throwing, just having a good old time. And he's like, hey, and he jumped at those guys' butts and made them build in uh reinforcements in those areas so what i'm saying is we don't know the day or the hour and these guys that are chastising people about saying hey you don't know the day or the hour and you may be wrong those guys are the ones that are going to be in trouble with god because how are you acting out of kindness and love towards your brother or your sister when you're saying you're a false teacher even the ones that say there is no rapture you see because they're wrong about their thing because it's talking about the seven, the trump and you can show in there that when he sticks in the sickle and all that there's an angel there and he does it too and they're cast into the wine press of the wrath of God and he says Christians are not brothers and sisters are not we are not given to the wrath of God but yet these Christians think that you've got to be saved by your own righteousness because if they cut your fingers off and stuff and you don't deny Christ if they starve you to death and you don't deny Christ if you're forced to watch as your wife is being raped and your children are being having their fingers cut off like that one pastor that was over there and they were cutting his 11 year old son's fingers off piece by piece they started at the tip of the finger and cut it off inch by inch till they cut it off till where there was no fingers and they did that on all 10 of his fingers and said now each time they were asking his daddy will you renounce christianity 
and the man didn't do it. And that's what these Christian brothers and sisters that believe that there's no rapture, they want to say, well, that's what we all have to go through, brother, because that's how God gets us righteous. It's not by the blood of Christ. It's not by the atonement or the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God. No, it's by my righteousness, brother, because I'm going to wash my garments in my own blood and I'm going to be sanctified by what I do here. That's what they're saying. These people are so self-righteous, you know, and a test is coming for them. That's what I think. Maybe they, God will bless them and allow them to go through the tribulation and let these people starve them to death and rape them and murder them. And they can watch their family and their close friends and stuff be tortured to death. And then that will sanctify them. That's not what my Bible tells me. That's not what the word of God says. These people are the false teachers, the ones that teach that nonsense, because nowhere in God, the word of God is it in there. It doesn't say you're sanctified by anything but the blood of the lamb. <laughs> Do you see that? I don't understand how they can see anything else. You know what? It's like giving you a box full of parts and, a, and an instruction manual, and then they put the here, put this together, and you got a picture. Oh, it looks like a desk to me. I'm building a desk, and they build it, and it's all crooked and cockeyed and half done. And they're like, and you're like, hey, how can you do that? Do you know that they, when you go to work for like a, a county or a city, do you know they go in and they give you a test? And they give you an aptitude test to see what your comprehension level is. And they'll say, read this and then tell me what you just read. Same thing with college. They want to know, can you read something and then comprehend it? And you know, they say that most people in the United States of America, the greatest nation in the world, have an education reading comprehension level below sixth grade. Do you know that? And so you got all these nuts on YouTube reading the Bible, and then they come on and they look at you. Oh, brother, I know what the Bible says. You know, I went to, I went to five years of college. I have two college degrees. I was in law enforcement. I had huge books, libraries of books that I had to know all those laws and how to interpret them because if I did something wrong, I'd go to jail. And I did all that. And then I read God's word. And the problem is, like in the beginning, you see, in the beginning of my ministry, God impressed it so much on me that he was coming, you see. And when God really speaks to you and he really speaks to your heart and you're really born again and he talks to you, you think it's immediate. You see, and then he showed me that thing with the pastor of the church. And then God told me the man was going to quit the ministry. This guy had been a minister for 15 years. This is the truth I'm telling you. This isn't some fantasy or some dream. I dreamed him coming to church, making a confession. I dreamed that he wore these certain clothes that he'd never wore in his entire life. And he'll tell you that if you want to contact him. And then he quit the ministry, just like God said. Okay. And who are you to come against me and tell me, Gary, you're a false teacher, you're a false prophet, when I'm not teaching anything other than, hey, let's look at God's word and let's decide what is the truth. And then somebody, these brothers and sisters want to cause controversy and stir things up and fight with one another and hate on one another over something that's not even Bible doctrine. It's church doctrine that's made this up, you see? Paul and them preached about the Lord coming way back, and then other people have taken that, and they've turned it into dates and times, and we know that, according to the book of Daniel, that the timeline, the clock that ticks everything down, couldn't even start until Israel became a nation again. The Bible tells us there'll be a third temple, that they will be doing sacrifices in that temple when the Antichrist makes the peace deal, because there's going to be a war, a worldwide war. Why is the Antichrist in Israel? Why is he there? Explain that to me. Why is the Antichrist in Israel making the peace deal? Why? The covenant with many. Why is he there? Why does he go in and set up his thing in the kingdom of Israel, in the temple of God in Israel? Why does he do that? If the United States is still here and there's no nothing that happens to us, why? Why, why isn't he talking about making a deal with us, the most powerful nation in the world? Huh? Because the Bible tells us about the, the, the ones that come from the north and the south and this war that happens and the ships and all this stuff. It's all in Daniel. It's in Ezekiel and the wars and all this stuff. And, the, and the, how many Jews are going to die? You know, it's all in there. And people have to have discernment. And most of you guys would never attempt to do brain surgery. Hey, I read this book. I think I comprehend it. And you know what? You, you got a tumor 
mom, dad, little baby kid that's in my family, whatever. I'm going to do brain surgery on you now because I think I can do it. You know, there's a bigger, di a big difference between reading a book and thinking you know something and actually being able to practice what you know. You see, and all, and and I just see this over and over again with these fights, constant fights with brothers and sisters and people arguing and causing tumult. And Paul, and it says in Timothy, I believe, is where it says, "Don't be doing that." But yet these Christians go, well, I felt it was my duty because uh, if, if, I see, if I see the enemy coming and, they, and I don't say anything in the blood, that's not what even that scripture means to you. Because <laughs> you have no training and no knowledge yourself. Hey, I'm going to go out there and get out, get in your car and start pulling people over and giving them tickets. You don't even know the law. You don't know anything about it, but yet you're going to do that, huh? Oh. We have to continue this a minute. My daughter-in-law is coming back. I don't know what to say. So disheartening. Alrighty, I'm back. So what I'm trying to say is that your salvation, whether you go in the rapture or, is not dependent on whether you believe in the rapture. What it's dependent on is your salvation. Are you saved? Have you been born again? You see, that is what what determines whether you go or not. Are you truly born again? Have you really given your heart to the Lord? Do you worship Him with all your heart, soul, and mind? Do you love your brothers and sisters like the Word of God says? Or do you constantly run around causing fights and grief and problems? You know, the Lord... Uh, <laughs> It, he never look the reason the thing that people are saying like the feast days and all that and christ fulfilled the first three feast days and and all this stuff right nowhere in the scripture does it say that christ has to fulfill any feast days show me the scripture that says that the lord jesus christ the son of the living god yeshua will fulfill all of the feast days show me that one you see that is part of church doctrine some men got together and they went, oh, look, these days correlate the day, the, the Passover with Christ dying, uh, for, uh, the first fruits of the dead. What happens if we're the first fruits of the living? Where's that? He was the first fruits of those that are dead that sleep. He fulfilled first fruits. Did he? Did he fulfill first fruits or did he fulfill first fruits of the dead coming? Where's the living ones? There was no living ones that went. And it even says the first fruits of that, of those that are dead. Okay, and then, oh, Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit came down 50 days later. Oh, but there is nothing that tells you that Christ is going to fulfill any more of those days with the church at all. You see, that's how people get into problems. They're talking, like when he talks about the ones on the roof, and flee when you see the abomination of desolation. Why is he saying that? If he, is he saying it to the church? Or was he saying that to the Jewish people at the time? Because, you know, there was an abomination that happened by Antioch Epiphanes. He did that. He put a slate of pig on the altar, and then he uh, put a statue of Zeus in there. And then the Maccabees revolt, revolted and took it away. And then Christ was born after that. That's where Hanukkah comes from. The oil lasted. There was only one cruise of oil and it lasted the... Do you see? And so here's the thing. We don't know anything about that for sure. But yet people are preaching that and then saying, this is false doctrine if you say anything else. And the church, who are these church men that were saying all this stuff? What gives them the authority? to say anything i wonder if those guys even had the holy spirit if they were even infilled and in speaking with tongues or anything i wonder about that kind of stuff don't you can we question or is it so absolute because i want to see these scriptures that back up what these people are saying and when you ask them they can't do it but i can show you that whenever it talks about in the book of the revelation when it talks about being caught up the only time it talks about catching up 
was whenever the Christ child is caught up, when the woman gives birth to the child and he's caught up into heaven. That's talking about Jesus Christ, Yeshua. It's talking about him being caught up into heaven. The devil was ready to <gasps> devour him. Oh, uh, that's the only time. And the other times when it talks about reaping and him returning in the clouds and all that, it's not catching away. That's not even in there. Show me that one in there. You can't show me. And what it says, if you read it every time, it says that that the angel sticks in the thing in, the, in there and takes out because the harvest is ripe. Even the part where he says he gathers his elect, the four angels and all that stuff, doesn't say they're caught away or anything. It's not the same word. And then you can see in the Old Testament, it says that the Jews are the elect of God, his chosen people. Maybe he's talking about them because the Antichrist is there in Israel and he does that defiling of the temple and all that. The Jews aren't believers. They're not going to believe until they know that, until he sets that up and then they're going to find out he's the false Christ. He's the Antichrist. And then they're going to turn to the real Lord, to Yeshua, you see, and then they'll be saved during the tribulation period. That's what it's telling you in there. If you had a, a an ear to hear. You know, he said all these things and the disciples were asking, why are you telling them in parables, but you tell us plainly? Oh, because you see, I don't want them to see me do these miracles and hear the words I have to say and understand it and become saved. But but Gary, the Bible also tells us that he wants everybody to be saved. But Jesus Christ, the son of God, just said, I don't want them to be saved. So that means there's people that aren't saved and the Jews rejected him and they're going to come in at the end time because God made a promise to them. And all these other Christians that think they know everything, they don't really know what God is saying in his word. And it's so hard for me because I'm trying to explain this and they just want to, you know, it's like when I was in law enforcement, there's only a few times I came in contact with people that would not obey the law and you'd show them the law and they still fought you. And then they had to go to jail or a huge fine or something. Then, oh, then all of a sudden they could believe <laughs> they didn't think you have any authority, you know? Oh, you're not wearing a gun or a, a nightstick, so what are you going to do to me? I don't know. I'm going to put you in jail. Because I had the authority to do that. If you're breaking the law, I could say, that dude broke the law. And my word was good enough in front of a judge to put you in prison. That's what it was. You see? And people don't realize. You see, it's like on the Dirty Harry movie when they were trying to recruit him to be a killer because all these gang people and stuff were getting away with murder so the cops started killing the people and then they tried to get him to do it and he wouldn't do it he wouldn't go he wouldn't go rogue on the world and become a killer like them ju a judge jury and executioner so then they tried to frame him for everything and planted a bomb but secretly dirty harry got their bomb reactivated it, stuck it in the back seat of their car and they drove away go ha ah, you're going to prison and these two other detectives and then boom their car blows up and he says a man's got to know his limitations you see, and we have to know our limitations as Christians. What is our level of knowledge? What is our experience with God? The Bible does not say that your salvation is dependent on you believing that there is a rapture. It only says that you believe in the Son of God. And these people say, oh, you're going to miss out. And you've led so many people astray. Like Brother Elliot said that to me, the Jew, the, the Messianic Jew. He says, you've led so many people astray, brother, because you believe that there's a rapture. And you think that because of the rapture that you can't, do not have to fulfill the feast days. And we all know that, brother. And it doesn't even say that in the word of God. And I try to talk to him and then he doesn't come to me privately. Or anything. He just starts accusing me and calling me names and stuff. And it's just so hard because I'm doing this out of the love of my heart for Christ. And I'm going to tell you something else, right? As far as the rapture goes. The Lord showed me personally and told me and I didn't even believe about it. Here's the thing. My daughter-in-law, she had a dream about the rapture. And she told me three years ago and she told her, she told my son, Abraham, who she's married to, that she had a dream about the rapture. And she said, in the dream of the rapture, we were up there. You see, here's my yard. Okay, that's the garage, that upper level. There's three levels here. She said, they were on that upper level. My wife and I were by that fence right there, that chain link fence in front of the garage where we're living. And she said, they'd walked out here. And see that? Okay, there's a, 
there's a trailer there, right? And they'd walk down this big driveway, and they walked up there onto that area, and we were up there, and the trumpet blew. And the Lord came. And she said, Dad, the funny thing was, okay, there was no trailer there. She said, she said, uh, I don't understand this. I don't know if it's really a dream from the Lord because in my dream there was this big white trailer in the yard parked there in that RV parking spot. There's an RV parking spot there with a thing where you can drain your tanks and plug in. She said there was a trailer there, a big white one. She says, and and I don't know, you know, because we don't have a trailer and you don't have one. You guys, are unless you're planning on buying one and living in it. And I said, no, you know. And then what happened was my wife and I have been fighting and stuff and going back and forth. And her and my daughter... Sarah decided to go look at a trailer because Sarah didn't have any place to live. And she was thinking about buying it and moving it into a place. And so then they went and they bought that trailer without me. Well, it needs all this work. You can't live in it. It was destroyed. And so, and I'm like, why didn't you tell me I could have helped you buy a better one than this? But they did it anyway. And then I hauled it over here. And I got over there and I was going to bring it in the driveway, but the trees have big branches that were in the way and we couldn't pull it in there. And I had to back it back up onto the street and turn it out of this driveway. And I parked it over here. And this was, Amy had this dream three years ago. Okay, the rapture happens and there's a trailer. And I, like, when they bought this trailer, I was thinking, I wonder if that could be it. But I was going to park it right here under these trees because it's shady there and I could work on it there. But I couldn't bring it in here. It was impossible. So I had to back it up over there. And then Amy came out and she's like, she saw it. And she's like, Dad, that's the trailer I saw in my rapture dream. Okay, we're going to have that thing done maybe in a month or so. I don't know. And then we're going to move it. So how will the rapture happen in the next month or so? I don't know. <laughs> my grandson, he was four years old. He went to Sunday school maybe five times. And he tells my daughter-in-law, Amy, uh, Mom, he's bouncing in the hallway, that hall, that little breezeway there. Okay, there was a bed in there because they got a new bed and they had the old bed out there and they were going to take it We're going to take it to the dump. We hadn't done it yet. And she was there drinking a cup of coffee and my grandson, whose name is Adam, he's jumping up and down on that and he's four years old and he says, Hey, Mom, when the bombs come down, comes down, come down, or the missiles come down, we go up. And she's like, excuse me and she's very proper and he says when the missiles come down we go up and she goes we go up where and she go and he says to be with jesus he's got eyes like like flames of fire i saw his eyes they're like flames of fire and he has long white hair and then he wouldn't talk anymore about it now they don't teach you that at four years old that's in the book of revelation that he has eyes of fire and that's when he comes back oh to judge oh america being judged why would he even say that that missiles come down and we go up to be with him in the sky how's that four-year-old child that dream he had uh when he was four he's he's uh i think he's 11 now or 10 so i don't know maybe it was maybe it was five years ago Maybe he's only nine. Anyway, he's gonna be, his birthday comes up pretty soon. But anyway, I can't remember the exact date when he said it, but he was only like four years old. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know what to say. The Lord told me three times there's going to be a rapture. He told me, uh, the first dream I ever had was about going to a wedding. The next dream was about I damaged his harvest somehow. I don't know how I did it. And he told me when the end of time would be because I was asking him. And I thought, well, maybe it's because arguing with my wife or something. Because my wife and daughter were with me in the dream. And you can go back and watch these dreams. I don't know what to tell all you guys that get on here and want to say all these horrible things to me. When I'm just trying to help. And, it's, and if I believe in the rapture, that changes nothing. You see? What does change something is you. And you saying, well, you're going to have to be tortured to death to make it in what about the millions upon millions of christians that are dead that never were tortured to death did they make it in were their white robes white 
You see, you make your robes white in the blood of the Lamb by going to Christ and Christ forgiving you. Not by being killed, you know, or being tortured to death. Hey, you know, I've seen guys admit to things under torture. Uh, they have uh, documented cases of people admitting to things, even crimes, with just cops investigating them and keeping them up overnight and, and you know, doing this stuff, grilling them, and they admit to things that they never did. So what chance do you have when the Antichrist is telling you, you know, you can't eat anything, you can't buy any gasoline, you can't have power for your house, you can't even have a job, you can't have anything without this mark. You know, how? How are you going to have enough food and power and everything, clothing? You know, your shoes will wear out in that seven year period, won't they? You know, and all these people have all this nonsensical stuff that they've built up on themselves because of doctrines of men. There's other men that have taught them these things. And, and it's logical, you see, because we need to really be tortured to find the Lord. That's what we need. And when Peter when Peter and them all died, you know, and Christ said, well, you're going to be you're going to be hunted down, persecuted and killed. Well, that means all of us, brother. Well, well, how do you know that? Well, because I just do. You see, I got a feeling. I got a feeling deep down inside that tells me that. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to trust your feelings. You're supposed to trust God. And and the thing is, the Lord told me in 2011 when I wasn't serving the Lord and I hadn't in 15 years, I wasn't even thinking about God. He said, repent, I am coming soon. Get your house in order. You see, if God didn't want to save me, he wouldn't have came. If Christ didn't want to save me out of this, he would have just let me. I'd still be riding my motorcycle and having a wonderful time, man. Like I was then, drinking, you know, having my beer when I wanted it. I could have whiskey. I used to love to drink whiskey, man. I liked fine whiskeys. I like, I got some uh, Scottish blood in me. My uh, dad's dad was one of the, mar one of the, uh, chambers and uh, the chambers were over in in scotland they helped the king they helped the scottish fight england you know they were the knights templar my relatives were and so and i can prove that because there's people that did a family genealogy and looked at oh yeah this is where you're from the only chambers that were over there were them they were knights templar and so the the Catholic Church persecuted, tried to kill them all, and they ran. They escaped there. They were in Roslyn Chapel. My uncle, his name is on the Battle Wall Abbey. Also, one of my uncles, Martin de Tours. So anyway, here's the thing. My whole ham. There's all. My family came. They can trace it back to three people on the first ships that came over here. The records were destroyed whenever there was that plague and they burned everything. They don't know which one, a captain's mate or the, the captain was named Martin. Or they were Martins. But anyway, you know, <laughs> what I'm just trying to say, why is all this going on? It says in the last days brother would be against brother and all this stuff. And that seems to be what's happening. I don't know what to say. Amy dreamed about that thing being there. I didn't buy it. My daughter bought it on her own. And Dad, I got to bring it over there and you got to help me fix it. You see? And then I tried to park it down here and then I had to park it up there. There was no other place. And then Amy says, hey, that's where it was. And she said, you know what? And there's something else, Dad, that I want to tell you that I never told you. I knew that trailer belonged to Sarah in the dream. She said, but I could not explain it because Sarah was going to college then and she wasn't around here. My daughter, Sarah, was going to college, so she says, I didn't say that because I couldn't understand how she would have a trailer at my house. So I thought, well, maybe this dream isn't from God. So, look up trumpets, how many times it's in there in the New Testament. It's in the Bible a hundred times, but I think a little bit more. But anyway, it's in there just twice, and then the, the trumpet blowing in the book of Revelation is a separate thing. And then there's a thing called the catching away. That word, you can look that Greek word up. It was in the original 
Bible way back as that word uh, rapture. They used that word in some of the early Bible. You see? But all these people want a war on you, you know? Because they're not happy with their own lives, so they feel that they have to go on YouTube and they have anonymity, so you can't tell who are they. It's just this person attacking you. And they're doing that, and they're hurting the body of Christ when they do that. They are disobeying the Scripture. Because Paul said, don't do this. Christ said, love your brothers. You know what Jesus did one time? Yeshua did this. He took off all of his clothes, and he put a towel around his waist, and he got a, he got a basin, and he got water, and he washed the disciples' feet. He took their feet off, and they, and when you urinate, when you have a pair of sandals on, it splatters all on mud and pee all on your feet. And he took their feet and washed their feet. He didn't say, go pre-wash your feet, men. He washed their feet, and he said, this is what you do to show that you love one another, and that nobody's greater than the other one. But yet you got people on YouTube going against what the Lord himself said. And then when you tell them, they, they've got some reason why they can do it. You know, it's like you see people, cops pull them over and they got a reason. Well, I was uh, this or I was that for what I did wrong. They don't get humble and say, look, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry, brother. Almost never do it, does anybody ever tell me. Even when I prove to them what I'm saying is true, they, al they almost never come back and apologize. Because they're not humble. They don't really repent. They just acknowledge, oh man, you know what? I had my idea and I was really righteous in what I said because I really believed it. That's what those guards did when they were killing the Jews. Hey, man, I thought I was doing a good thing by killing the Jews. I'm not guilty. I was doing a service to the Fuhrer. That's what they say. You know, you should think, because it says in there, every word that comes out of your mouth you'll be judged by, and every thought and intent of your heart, the Lord knows what you're thinking. You think when he asked Cain, hey, where's your brother? Cain, where's your brother? And Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Do you think God didn't know where Cain, what Cain had did? You think he didn't know? You think he didn't know when Satan came in there and was tempting Eve? You think God was like, what well, was he in heaven somewhere having a latte when Eve was being tempted by Satan? Or do you think God knew all about that? Do you think God allowed that? Because nothing can happen to you unless God allows it. Not even a sparrow can fall from a tree and die without the permission from Almighty God. But he didn't know that Satan was going to do that. Or was God trying to give you choice and all this was the plan of God? Maybe every bit of it. Everything that's ever happened to you in your life. Oh, was that a plan of God? Does that mean God's really in control? And he knows everything? He knows what you're thinking. What's in your heart? Are you thinking wicked thoughts, doing things to people because of pride? Because you think you're so wise? What happens if Gary bears 049? What happens if that dude really is a prophet of God and God did send him to say these things and do that? Just like when Jeremiah and Jeremiah told him, look, the Lord has told me that the kingdom is going to fall and the city is going to be overthrown. There's going to be a great loss of lives unless you lay down your swords and surrender. And you know what they did to Jeremiah for saying that? They threw him in a sewage pit. They threw him in the hole down there. Because he told them the truth and then it happened and all those guys lost their lives. Did they make it into the kingdom? Oh, no, they didn't. They got killed. Because the prophet told them the truth and they didn't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I didn't really even want to make those other videos. I guess I shouldn't have. It would have saved me some grief. But people were saying, oh, Gary. Look, you got to have a relationship with Christ yourself. You got to dig into God's word yourself. You got to find the Lord yourself. You see? That's what you got to do. You alone. I'm not going to be standing there. You're going to stand there alone by yourself in front of God. You got to do it. So that's what my advice to you is. Find yourself. Find the Lord yourself. Look, I'm going to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Lord, Father, we come before you. You are the Lord of our lives. We love you. Please infill these people with the Holy Spirit that don't have it. Give them truth and wisdom. Father God, undertake for their needs. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen.